I'll be back later, honey. Okay. No, I didn't want more, more. <laughs> Listen, listen to me. I'll be back soon. I want you to be really good while I go, okay? Try your best. Do your best. I'll be back in a little bit, okay? I'll see you soon. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay. Okay? At age 14 physically and mentally four, Jenna is my daughter and I am forever umbilically tied to her. No one will care about her as much as I will. And one day I will be gone, and she will live on. So what's it like after 14 years of ha having to deal with your daughter on a daily basis, on an hourly basis? It's got to be tremendously stressful. How can I help? I don't know how you can help me. I don't know if anybody can help me, quite honestly. I understand that you have a daughter with special needs. Is that kind of the uh, baseline of your uh, stress? Are there other things, or is it basically her? She's um, 14 going on four, and um, she is completely all-consuming. Uh, and I just have to manage her. And I feel kind of desperate at this stage of 14 years of doing this that uh, and, you know, I've just kind of like run my race. I've run my race. I just feel like I'm hitting my head up against a wall and the whole process is exhausting me and I just don't know how to deal with it anymore. That's it in a nutshell. So why right now it has become so difficult? See, that's really the bottom line. After 14 years of doing this, I'm kind of, I've just, I'm done with it. And when I say I can't do it anymore, I know I have to do it. I don't have a choice. I don't have the choice. I have to get up tomorrow and I have to take get her dressed for the hundred millionth time of my life getting her dressed. I have to. And and I'm going to be continuing to do this. For how long? At least until she's 18. And I hate myself for, and I feel guilty about the fact that I don't want to do it for another single day and yet she is my daughter and nobody in this world loves her more than I do. And at the same time, I hate her because I've got to get up tomorrow and dress her and clean her and feed her and brush her hair and bath her and brush her teeth and clean up after her and take care of her and make sure all her needs are met. So. From now on, what are you going to do to alleviate some of this stress? See, there lies the rub. I feel completely trapped. I brought my daughter into this world and she's my responsibility and I can't just throw her out with the trash. But I am more than just a mother of a special need child. And I want to live my life and enjoy my life but I'm consumed by having to take care of her. So I feel completely hopeless. Just taking care of Jenna consumes me. It's a catch-22. Sometimes I catch myself muttering, how much longer will you stay for? When will you learn to dress yourself? When will you stop eating like a pig? I can't stand this. I think I'm going mad. Take me off the spinning top of endless tedium. I'm on a carousel, a crazy carousel, and it's going round again and up again around. Somebody help me. Look at me talking to myself. I am going crazy. Okay, okay. Go, Mom! Alright, you're going upstairs. Okay. You're going to have fun. Teach. Go, teach, go. Woo! Can you go, please? Can Jenna? I go, can Jenna I go upstairs. Okay. Bye, Mom. See you in three minutes. Get up, go. I'm going up right now. I know her so well, better than anyone. 
When she speaks, it's mostly what I've taught her, those formative years, her first six, when I was devoted to helping her crawl, walk, and then the hardest task of all, talk. The other day she said something that amused me. She was labeling kids in her class, and it is my interpretation that she was labeling, as Jenna doesn't know what that means. Jeff has cerebral palsy, and so does Sally. And Robin has Downs, she says in a childlike intonation. Oh, I say. And what do you have? I have the ups, she says emphatically, like, don't you know? Somehow it's weirdly appropriate because for the most part, she is up, happy. Shows no guile or mean-spiritedness. She's most certainly on. The battery-operated toy that goes and goes, bashing blindly into things, falling, flailing, but still marching on and on, a whirling dervish, an exhausting dance. She's all innocence, completely dependent like a domestic animal. I must clothe and feed her. I must strategize her day, coordinate her existence with mine and with what I have to do, want to do, beyond Jenna. I bathe her every night. I know every aspect of her body as intimately as a mother knows her infant. The love is there, a parent's prerogative. She has my mother's eyes and brows and perfect skin, just the right bronze tone before it seeps into the depths of olive. A cheek so smooth you want to kiss it. And still there, in the crook of her neck, the unsullied smell of childhood sweetness. And when I have wrapped up my eight to five day with no lunch break, hour upon hour with my clients who own me for their hour, I go to Jana. Did you miss me, mummy? She asks. I always miss you when I work, I say, and I wrap my arms around her and ask her for a real hug.